This video is sponsored by RenderHub. They're preparing for something pretty cool right now, which we're gonna talk about in a moment. Depending on who you ask, Blender seems different. And one of the things that divided the Blender community the most is the interface. For some, it is one of the most powerful free tools out there, with shortcuts that make it faster compared to commercial 3D software. And for others, the same interface is what makes Blender unwelcoming where even simple tasks seem harder than they should be. This split has always been part of the Blender story, and it is why so many debates about the program circle back to usability. And since Blender developers can satisfy everyone, some users took matter into their own hands and made a Blender fork that changed Blender in a way that they saw fit, and they called it B4 Artists. So what is this fork and how it made Blender look like two different versions? Before we continue, RenderHub is running the Horrific Renderer contest right now, back for its fourth round, that is gonna end on Halloween night. The prizes pool on the table is worth $2670, including cash for the top spots, honorable moments, and even some WTF awards for the strangest renders. To join in, all you need is an original render that leans into the horrific theme. I'm not gonna spoil all the details here. The link in the description will take you straight to the contest page for more details. While on RenderHub, I've gotta say that the gallery is pretty amazing to check out. It is packed with artists' portfolios, stunning renders, and it is a good place to boost your own work, if you want more eyes on it. You can browse through different styles, follow artists, and get a feel for what people are creating right now. The contest deadline is October 31st, and winners get announced mid-November. So head over to RenderHub through the link down below to check out all the details. Back in 2015, Reiner Tiles Prokin had grown tired of watching the same arguments repeat on Blender forums. As both an artist and a programmer, he decided to stop debating and start building. So he pulled apart Blender's interface and began reshaping it into something which in his view would be less of a wall for beginners to climb. The project was called B4 Artists. It was meant to put usability at the center for people who might be new to 3D, or those who were coming from different software. By 2018, the first table release was out. That was an interesting time, because Blender itself was preparing to move from version 2.7 to the long-awaited or long-anticipated version 2.8. For a while, the B4 Artists team held back to see if Blender's redesign would make their fork unnecessary. So when 2.8 arrived, it was clear that Blender was still built around speed through shortcuts, while before artists stayed committed to usability. And this was enough for the fork to keep going. Anyone opening before artists after using Blender can notice the difference. Blender has always assumed you would use the keyboard constantly. If you know the hotkeys, the program flies. If you don't, it feels like you are missing the map. On the other hand, B4 Artists leans into menus, toolbars, and icons instead, making nearly everything visible without memorization. Extended menus at the top, reorganized panels, and toolbars with clear buttons are part of the default layout. Options that Blender hides behind right clicks, obscure shortcuts are placed where you can see them. The result looks busier, but newcomers usually prefer visible clutter over invisible tools. Icons are another clear distinction. Blender icons are mostly monochrome and often sparse. On the other hand, B4 Artists added more than a thousand colorful icons, giving each tool category its own look. Some artists like color because they can spot tools at a glance, while others feel like it is making the interface grounded. Smaller details also show how B4 Artists tried to lower the barrier. Long before Blender 2.8 adopted left-click select, B4 Artists had it as the default. Hotkeys were simplified to match common industry standard, W, E, and R for move, rotate, and scale. A dedicated panel lists important shortcuts, so beginners don't need to hunt through the menus or keep a sticky note on the monitor. Navigation was adjusted too. Switching views in Blender traditionally relied on the number path which is awkward on laptops. B4 Artists added visible buttons for front, side, and top views, along with easy toggles between perspective and orthographic. Toolbars that Blender had removed, like tab tool shelves, 
were brought back to give mouse-driven users more flexibility in how they work. Blender menus often contain the same function in multiple places for convenience, but this also makes them feel crowded. On the other hand, before artists trimmed away this duplication, so each function shows up once, reducing the time you spend scrolling through the long lists, and tooltips were rewritten. So instead of dense technical wording, they explain features in simpler terms and sometimes offer extra hints. It is a subtle change, but for someone who's still learning, it makes the software less cryptic. Even as an experienced artist, you would benefit from faster reminders when bouncing between different workflows. Alongside interface changes, the team invested heavily in documentation. So rather than sending artists to Blender's massive online manual, Before Artist maintained its own guide. It is available online as a downloadable PDF that runs over 3,000 pages. Every button, panel, and tool is documented with a step-by-step -step explanation aimed at people who don't really know Blender's quirks. You see, the style of writing matters here. Blender's official documentation has often leaned on shortcuts references and assumed a certain level of prior knowledge before artists instead explain tasks in a way that makes sense for someone completely new. This approach fits with its overall goal of lowering their learning curve and encouraging exploration without intimidation. Since before artists builds on Blender's codebase, every new update to Blender has to be merged to make its way in. This takes time. Features like geometry nodes, sculpting updates, or changes to Cycle's render engine usually show up later, but they do arrive. This delay is the cost of maintaining a fork. The team needs to apply Blender's new code and then reapply their own interface changes. And despite the extra work, Before Artist has stayed consistent over the years. It remains fully compatible with Blend files and most Blender add-ons, which means artists can move between the two without losing work. The fork was not universally welcomed. Some long-time Blender users argued efficiency comes from the hotkeys and that added more visible UI elements slows everything down. Others questioned whether the fork was necessary in the first place, when Blender was already redesigning its own interface. Still, before artists quickly found support among beginners, hobbyists, and indie developers. For people who use only 3D occasionally, it felt less like learning a new language. Artists coming from software such as Maya and Max also found it more familiar, thanks to the left-click select and conventional hotkeys choices. The early community response included heated debates. Posts about Bfrost on Blender forums often drew criticism, with some users calling the project redundant or disrespectful to the work of the developers. But over time, the noise settled down and before artists found its role as an alternative rather than a rival. You see, misconceptions have surrounded before artists since the beginning, because it marketed itself as beginner-friendly. People often assumed it was a simpler, a watered-down version of Blender. In reality, every feature was intact, nothing was stripped out, because it was simply rearranged. This perception issue has probably limited its perception, since many potential users dismiss it without realizing how capable it is. Blender 2.8 and later versions solved many of the complaints that this fork was originally built around, such as left-click select, modernized layouts, and a new toolbar that narrowed the gap between the two. Even so, Blender for Artists kept its identity with the colorful icon system, leader menus, and extensive documentation. The mere existence of this fork says a lot about the ongoing tension around Blender's design. Should the interface prioritize speed for veterans or accessibility for newcomers? Blender has actually leaned toward efficiency, expecting users to climb the learning curve, before artists, on the other hand, chose to bring the hill down a little bit lower so more people could start climbing. And because Blender is open source, forks like this can exist without permission, and they act as experiments showing what's possible if you shift priorities. Even if the fork never became a reality or popular, it adds pressure and it gives a different perspective. So by the time Blender 2.8 launched with its own redesigned interface, 
The community has been already talking about the usability for years, thanks in part to B4 artists, which never aimed to replace the official version of Blender, and it never has. The community is smaller, and the release cycle is slower, and the industry recognition isn't the same. But what it did actually provided a choice for artists who prefer menus and clear icons over memorization. And there you have it, guys. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to the channel to receive more videos like this. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.